Can you visualize what really happens to the kinematics of an object falling under the force of gravity? Well, an interesting way to visualize this is to write the value of g, that is 9.8 meters per second square, as 9.8 meters per second per second. You see, if you take this S up, you get your 9.8 meters per second square back, which is a more familiar way of writing the value of G. So when you write G this way, it'll give you a sense of how the force of gravity changes the velocity and position of an object. It simply means that an object subjected to an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second square will have its velocity increasing by 9.8 meters per second every second and since the velocity is increasing every second the distance covered also increases every passing second to illustrate the idea let us say an object is dropped from top of a very tall building now always remember when an object is dropped its initial velocity is zero so at the end of one second its velocity will be 9.8 meters per second then wait for one more second at the end of two seconds its velocity will be 9.8 plus 9.8 meters per second or 19.6 meters per second at the end of three seconds it'll be 29.4 meters per second so you see every second the velocity of the object will increase by 9.8 meters per second and since the velocity is increasing every second, it also makes sense that the distance it covers every second also rapidly increases as it falls. Now, when we use g in various problems, we must remember that g is a vector and since it always points downwards, that is in the negative direction of y-axis, it is always to be taken as minus 9.8 meters per second square. So, while the magnitude of g is 9.8 meters per second square, when you use it in any equation, you should put a negative sign as well. That indicates its vector nature or its direction. Now, the best way of understanding motion of an object falling under gravity would be to do a few problems and we'll start with a simple one. So, let us say you throw a ball vertically up along the y-axis with an initial velocity of 12 meters per second. So the first question is, how long does it take for the ball to reach the maximum height? Let us visualize what is happening here. And when I say visualize, it means imagine yourself throwing the ball up in the air. So as the ball rises up, it has to stop at some point. And when it stops, two things happen. One, it has achieved maximum height and two, its velocity has become zero. And this makes sense because if the velocity has not become zero, the ball would have kept going up. So we can use a formula V is equal to V naught plus 80 to find the time it takes to reach the maximum height. Now, let us be careful in putting the right values in this equation. The final velocity V is zero. The initial velocity v naught is 12 meters per second and we will take it positive because it is pointing in the upward direction or along plus y axis. The ball continues under the force of gravity or experiencing an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second square but directed downwards at all times. So the g value is minus 9.8 meters per second square and this downward pull due to acceleration or gravity is the reason the velocity is reducing as the ball is moving up. So when we solve for t, we find time taken to reach the top is 1.2 seconds. The next question is, what is the maximum height the ball reaches? Now, one important thing you need to remember when solving problems is to establish the origin or the point from where you will do all measurements. For motion along yy axis, in most cases, ground level can be taken as the zero level and all measurements can be done from this point. So here, the ground level is the initial position. So we take y naught is equal to zero 
And when you put this small zero here, it usually means at time t equal to zero. Then let us use the equation v square is equal to v naught square plus 2ax minus x naught to find the maximum height the ball reaches. However, we should use y instead of x and we will rewrite it as v square is equal to v naught square plus 2ay minus y naught. Then taking final velocity v equal to 0 and y naught is equal to 0, we get 0 is equal to 12 square plus 2 into minus 9.8 into y minus 0 or y is equal to 7.3 meters. The next question is how long does the ball take to reach 5 meter above the ground level? Now here we can make use of the equation y minus y naught is equal to v naught t plus half a t square. Then putting y naught is equal to 0, y is equal to plus 5 meters and plus because the distance is being measured in the plus y direction. And actually I should not use the word distance because all these equations are derived for displacement and not distance. Then v naught is equal to 12 meters per second. Again positive since it is in the plus y direction and g as minus 9.8 meters per second square. Now this is a quadratic equation and therefore we get two values of t that are 0.53 seconds and 1.9 seconds. And two values of t should not surprise you because first the ball reaches 5 meter mark on its way up and then it reaches the 5 meter mark again 1.9 seconds later from the beginning on its way down. In fact, what I said earlier about not using distance and displacement interchangeably will make more sense to you now because you can see here in this case after 0.53 seconds the displacement is same as at the end of 1.9 seconds but the total distance covered at the end of 1.9 seconds is more than the distance covered at the end of 0.53 seconds because the ball went right up to its maximum height then came down back to 5 meter level. So your total distance covered is 7.3 meters plus this distance that is 2.3 meters or a total distance of 9.6 meters. Let us do another problem which I think is quite interesting. So what we have in this problem is a hot air balloon which is going up at a rate of 12 meters per second and is 80 meters above the ground. And at this point of time, that is when it is 80 meters above the ground, a package is dropped over the side. And the first question is, how long does it take for the package to reach the ground? So as a first step, we will take the ground level as y is equal to 0 meter. And then we can use the equation y minus y naught is equal to v naught t plus half a t squared. So here our initial position is this, that is plus 80 meters and a final position is 0 meters. Now the initial velocity of the packet will be the same as that of the balloon that is plus 12 meters per second. And some of you might think that the packet's initial velocity should be 0 meters per second. But you have to remember that your frame of reference is Earth. Or in simple words, you are an observer on Earth solving this problem, looking at this balloon and the packet go up. And therefore, the velocity of the packet will also be 12 meters per second because along with the balloon, the packet is also moving up at 12 meters per second. But of course, the velocity of the packet will be 0 meters per second if your frame of reference is the hot air balloon. Again, in simple words, if you are sitting inside the hot air balloon, then the velocity of the packet will be 0 meters per second for you. So we put the values as follows. 0 meters, that is the final position of the packet, minus the initial position, that is plus 80 meters, 
is equal to plus 12 meters per second into t plus half into minus 9.8 meters per second square into t square and this gives us a value of t as 5.45 seconds the second question is what is the velocity at which the packet hits the ground so we will use the equation v is equal to v naught plus 80 and let us go ahead and substitute the values so we know v naught and now we also know t so v is equal to 12 plus minus 9.8 into 5.45 and this equals minus 41.41 meters per second and the negative sign basically means that the direction of velocity vector is in the downward direction which indeed it is when it is hitting the ground let us do another question that has a slight variation and will bring more conceptual clarity so what we have here is a parachutist who bails out of a plane and falls freely for 50 meters after which the parachute opens and then he decelerates at 2 meters per second square and he hits the ground at 3 meters per second. The first question is how long was a parachutist in the air? So let us first make a diagram and put all the information before we go ahead and in fact I would urge you all to make neat diagrams when solving physics problems because it brings more clarity and also reduces the chances of making errors. So as usual, we take the ground as zero meter position or y is equal to zero meter here. This is y naught or the initial position at t equal to zero seconds when the parachutist jumps out of the plane and then the parachutist has a free fall of 50 meters and at 50 meter mark the parachute opens also when the parachutist drops out of the plane the initial velocity is zero and here the assumption is that either the plane is stationary that is it has zero velocity when the parachutist jumps out or the plane is moving horizontally in which case the parachutist has no vertical component of velocity so you see this is different from the earlier problem where the packet had a clear vertical component of velocity and therefore the initial velocity was not zero. Now we will use the equation y minus y naught is equal to v naught t plus half a t square to find the time it took the parachutist to reach the 50 meter mark. So let us say this is point y 50 meters below the plane and if this is y naught then this point should be y naught minus 50 meters because it is 50 meters below y naught and do not make the mistake of marking this as 50 meter because this is 50 meters from the top while our origin is here and all distances have to be measured from the origin so all points on this line have to be marked moving up from the origin so now we put the relevant numbers in the equation so y naught minus 50 minus y naught is equal to half into minus 9.8 times t square or t is equal to 3.2 seconds now once you've done enough problems and are experienced enough you could just write y minus y naught as minus 50 because y minus y naught is nothing but the displacement of the parachutist and since it is 50 meters in value and in downward direction or minus y direction it is minus 50 meters now we need to find the time it took the parachutist to drop from this 50 meter mark to the ground or y is equal to 0 meters so we could use the equation v is equal to v dash plus 80 to find the time it takes to cover this part of the fall now here v is equal to the final velocity when the parachutist hits the ground which is given as 3 meters per second and v dash is the initial velocity at this point that is before the parachute opens and a is the deceleration given as 2 meters per second square notice that in this part of the journey 
the parachutist is not falling down at minus 9.8 meters per second squared, but at plus 2 meters per second squared. And we'll discuss this plus sign in a moment. But now we don't know V dash. So to find V dash, we will use the equation V dash square is equal to V naught square plus 2A Y minus Y naught for this part of the fall. Here V naught is the initial velocity which is zero and we know that Y minus Y naught is minus 50 meters. So what we get is V dash square is equal to two times minus 9.8 into minus 50 or V dash is equal to minus 31 meters per second. And we've taken the negative route because the direction of this velocity is in the minus y direction. Now we can use the value of V dash here in this equation to find the time for this part of the fall. And let us pay attention to the sign we're going to put against each value. So the final velocity is minus three meters per second because it is in the negative y direction. Initial velocity is minus 31 meters per second. But the deceleration of two meters per second square will be positive because it is acting in the upward direction. And why do we assume that it is acting in the upward direction? Because only when it acts in upward direction will the velocity reduce from 31 meters per second to three meters per second. Also, you know that a parachute is used to reduce velocity as you fall towards the ground. And you see that the deceleration here is taken as positive acceleration despite the fact that the velocity is reducing. So this is another example which shows that the sign of acceleration indicates the direction only. So minus three is equal to minus 31 plus two times t gives t is equal to 14 seconds. So the total time taken is 14 seconds plus 3.2 seconds, which equals 17.2 seconds. So if you want to understand kinematics to a level that you can crack high level problems, I would suggest you go through this playlist. And as always, if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and see you in the next video.